In the last two videos, we've talked about how after a meal, you have a lot of glucose in your blood. And we mentioned in the first video that there are three different cells in which your body is going to store that glucose so that you can use it over a long period of time. And the first of these cells is a muscle cell. The second kind of cell is a liver cell, which we also call a hepatocyte. Whenever you see hepato, you can think of liver. So a hepatocyte, which is a liver cell. And the third kind of cell where you're going to store the glucose is a fat cell, which is also called an adipocyte. Adipose tissue is fat. So an adipocyte is just a fat cell. So we've talked about how when you have all this glucose in the blood, it's going to get taken up into these cells. And we talked about the way that it's going to know to do that. And what was that again? That was insulin. So insulin is a hormone which your pancreas is going to release. And that hormone is going to tell these three cells to take up this glucose. In this video, I'd like to talk about exactly how these cells are going to store that glucose. So let's start with the muscle cell. The muscle cell kind of does the most simple thing. It takes a bunch of these glucose molecules and it links them together. So we can call this a glucose polymer. And actually it's not just one chain. These glucose polymers branch out and so they form this set of interlinking chains which we call glycogen. And a full glycogen molecule actually ends up looking kind of like a little bit like a snowflake with all these branching series of glucose polymers. So that's the first way in which glucose will be stored. It'll be stored as glycogen in the muscle cells. So now how about the liver? How do you think the liver stores glucose? Well, you can answer that question because it's actually stored in exactly the same way as in the muscle cells. So the liver also connects the glucose molecules together to form glycogen. So how about the fat cells? How do they store the energy of the glucose? Well, they actually don't create glycogen like these first two guys. They use the energy of the glucose to make these things called fatty acids, which are kind of just long chains of carbon. And we're just going to draw them as a, a white line like that. And the adipocyte actually connects three of these fatty acids together to form a triglyceride. So it actually uses a glycerol molecule, which you can look up if you're interested, to connect three fatty acids together. And that's the form in which it stores the energy from the glucose. So this is what happens when you have a bunch of glucose in your blood after a meal and you want to store it. But now let's talk about how you actually make use of this energy later on. So a couple hours after your meal, your body is going to release glucagon, as we talked about in the last video. And glucagon is going to tell these three cells to release their energy. So let's talk about how that works. So here we have your blood vessel in this case. And let's start by talking about the hepatocyte. Now for the hepatocyte, it's kind of simple. It has all this glucose bundled up into glycogen. And what it's going to do is just to unbundle that glucose and put it back into the blood. So the liver is going to replenish some glucose in the blood by using up its glycogen. The adipocytes, so they're going to take these triglycerides and they're actually going to break them up into fatty acids and put them into circulation and they can be used like that by some cells of the body for energy. And finally, the muscle cells do something a little different. The reason why we didn't start with them is because they actually don't put the glucose back into circulation. Muscle cells are selfish and when they get the glucose they make glycogen but they make it for themselves later on. So what the muscles will do when they need the energy is to break the glycogen down into glucose and then use that glucose themselves for energy. And again, all these reactions are essentially told to occur by glucagon, which is released by your pancreas when you don't have enough glucose in the blood. Now before we finish, I thought it might be fun to talk about exactly how much of this glycogen these cells can store. So the liver can store enough glycogen 
so that that glycogen will make up about 5% of the liver's mass. And that comes out to about 300 kilocalories of energy. Meanwhile, the muscles can produce enough glycogen to make up about 1 to 2% of their mass. But as you might guess, you have a lot more muscle in your body than you have liver. And so that actually amounts to more than the liver. It amounts to about 1,200 kilocalories. And it's worth noting, these, this unit kilocalorie is the same as the calorie number that's given in the nutritional details of foods. But as we said, the energy that your muscles store it can only be used for the muscle. So the rest of your body has to get by on the glycogen of your liver. But 300 calories really isn't that much. It only lasts you a couple of hours. So we see that it's actually quite important that we have this other way of storing energy, these fatty acids. Because without it, we'd run out pretty quickly.